For today's Heritage Highlight, we're exploring the history of medical illustration at Mayo Clinic. And joining me is uh, Karen Coca from the Mayo Clinic Archives and Bob Morial, a certified medical illustrator and the chair for immersive and experiential learning and education. Thank you for joining us both. Karen, we'll start with you. There is no better way to start this uh, discussion by paying tribute to the uh, transparent man who has been a fixture at the Patient Education Center here in Rochester. Tell us a little bit more about this exhibit. Well, transparent man was requested by the or ordered by the Mayo uh, Clinic for the 1933 Century of Progress exposition in Chicago. Um, but the story of that exposition started in 1931 when Mayo was invited to exhibit. And the Board of Governors specifically re uh, required that before Mayo would exhibit, that they would have permission from the American Medical Association. Uh, and the reason was that at that time it was considered unprofessional for physicians to advertise and they were worried that an exhibit would be considered an, some form of advertisement for Mayo Clinic. Transparent Man was actually part of a much larger Mayo Clinic exhibit, including three large exhibit areas with wax models, motion pictures, um, other medical information, and it was because people were just learning about the human body, and that's why this is so important in terms of how it's displayed is because he is transparent. He's made of cellon, which is a uh, organic material. It's inflammable. It was made in Germany, um, and the clinic did order him from the German Hygiene Museum in Dresden. But people wanted to know how the body functioned, and they were really interested in seeing it in color. Now he was made at a cost of $10,000 and I looked that up on the inflation estimator today. Mm -hmm. That is about $230,000 right now in today's, money. in today's money. And I think of him as a real transition and watershed moment in the history of medical illustration because before the participation in this exhibit, Mayo was dedicated to educating graduate medical students and physicians and surgeons, clinicians. Um, they did not participate in public exhibits and to participate in this was a real transition to a new form of medical education at Mayo. Thank you, Karen. Now, Bob, the transparent man is often mentioned as a big fixture in Mayo Clinic history, but our commitment to share knowledge through visual demonstration has been long-standing, correct? Uh, that's true, Axel. Uh, Bob, why do you think uh, the Mayo brothers prioritized hiring all these medical illustrators? Yeah, yeah. They, they saw it as a, an important aspect to uh, share their advancements, particularly in surgery. Uh, illustrations, uh, as well as photogra uh, photographs, photography was advancing at the time. But they thought illustrations really uh, was able to define some of the step process for surgery, uh, being able to uniquely eliminate certain anatomical structures, or maybe ghost through to show uh, orientation to and, and, and process as, as they were really pioneering surgical procedures at the time. And that holds true until or through today uh, because uh, you have a or there's a big team now of medical illustrators. Talk a little bit about yeah. what uh, what's uh, going on today. So we have a team of uh, 18 very highly skilled medical illustrators and animators but we've now started to advance and use their skills to take advantage of uh, the technology of today to create things like 3D printed models and uh, for surgical planning um, and, you know, uh, installing those visual assets in immersive experiences. Excellent. Bob, thank you so much for this brief overview. Karen, to you as well. We're going to leave it at that because we're going to next take you to a very exciting area. All right, we're stepping into the future now. We are in the Procedural Skills Lab here at St. Mary's, and joining us is Dr. Jonathan Morris. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Dr. Morris, you have many, many roles at Mayo Clinic, but uh, what is your role pertaining to this space? Yeah, so uh, I'm a neuroradiologist at Mayo Clinic, but I've built a few things. One of them is the 3D Printing Center, and another one is I'm Executive Medical Director of Immersive and Experiential Learning. Dr. Morris, tell us a little bit about uh, this, what looks like a giant uh, tablet here. Yeah, so this is one of the tools we have for education in this space. It's a, essentially what you said, a large tablet, but it's interactive in a way that we can put bespoke three-dimensional content on it 
and we can rotate it and take layers on and off of the body. The other thing that it allows us to do is like move through the body. So we can move up and down the body and move through different areas. Another area we wanted to quickly focus on was uh, virtual reality. That's a big aspect around yeah. here. So one of the benefits of this space is it's, it's really flexible. So as an example, Anna here is in virtual reality in a Mayo Clinic biplane floor unit, which is a place where we train radiologists and radiology technologists. And she's standing here in the Procedural Skills Center, but virtually she's in a room upstairs that has patients in it. So one of the difficulties wow. of training people in Mayo Clinic complex environments is we have to train them, but we also have to be treating patients in those ORs, in those rooms, in real time. So one of the ways we've gotten around that is to be able to put that room as a digital twin in an immersive environment. So if you look at what Anna's looking at right now, she's looking at the machine and she's actually seeing through the machine and she can see things that we can't teach even in the room. Because we digitally created this, we can learn each different part of the fluoroscopic machine. And she's doing it in a controlled setting with no radiation in the Procedure Skills Center, but she could be doing it anywhere on the globe. How does a technology like this position Mayo Clinic for the future? Yeah, well, I think it continues our leadership in education. We have vast educational gaps and we have vast numbers of people to educate. So we have everything from the most complex cardiothoracic fellow to educate all the way down to all our schools of allied health. We have five schools of health science, 400 programs, possibly up to 4,500 learners in any given time. And it's incredibly steep learning curves. And we only have so many people, places, and things to be able to do it. So by building immersive virtual environments, it allows us to democratize just not the space, but also the knowledge to where a learner or a trainee can be anywhere here, but also anywhere on the globe. So we can train our employees and learners faster and flatten the learning curve, but we can also extend our reach and democratize our space and IP and intelligence to people that we'll never meet by simply sending them a virtual reality headset wow. and all of a sudden we can be in a virtual environment together. That's incredible. Mayo Clinic, once again, leading the way now and for generations to come probably. Yeah. Uh, we're out of time. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time, Dr. Morris. Uh, we could yeah. talk about a lot more things, but we'll leave it at that. And again, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching.